Hi there everyone, Linda here from Just For Tummies and welcome. Um, a few, well a week or so ago I gave, uh, I did a live presentation with um, my nutritional therapist Sophia Hill and we did it on the subject of urinary tract infections, thrush and bacterial vaginosis because September is urological awareness month so that's creating more awareness about uh, the urinary system so that's the kidneys, the bladder, well, the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder and the urethra in that order. And some ladies contacted me and asked if I would do a live um, and create, create more awareness around lichen sclerosis. Now, being a natural health practitioner for 30 years and having helped lots of women improve their health and well-being, <clears throat> I'd, of course, come across the term lichen sclerosis, but I didn't know an awful lot about it. So I've been so looking forward to this live tonight so that I can learn more about this condition that I think, because it relates to the vagina and the vulva, uh, many women are embarrassed or ashamed to talk about it, and we need to change that. So tonight I'm joined by Claire Baumhauer. Claire, I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly. And Claire is um, Claire has lichen sclerosis, and she is a vulval cancer survivor. And she runs the lichen sclerosis and vulval cancer. UK awareness groups. Um, she's on Facebook, she's got a website, she's on Twitter, she's on Instagram, she's very active on social media, creating more awareness about lichen sclerosis and vulval cancer. So I'm going to um, get join, uh, well, get Claire to join us now. There she is. Hi there, Claire. Hi, hello, everyone. So, Claire. Yeah. Um, I've just introduced um, the subject matter for tonight and um, I'd like as I said you you've had like you you have lichen sclerosis is that correct yes I've had it since I was about five years old but I was yes. diagnosed for quite a long time so what what were you diagnosed with um started off with when I was younger I was told it was cystitis but as I got older, I was told it was thrush, which a lot of people are told. Um, yes. As I got as I got a lot older, um, I was then told it may be menopause symptoms. And at one stage, I was even told it was herpes. Really, really. And 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 these diagnoses were by your GP. You you were never referred <clears throat> to either gynaecology or dermatology. No, it was. Um, I saw probably about thirty GPs over that time because although I was in one GP practice, there was quite often locums or a more than one GP. I wouldn't always see the same GP. Um, I did as a child, but as I got older, you make an appointment and you see whoever was there. So I was seen by multiple different GPs who all misdiagnosed the lichen sclerosis. So you were diagnosed at the age of four. Um, th that's very young, isn't it? I mean, is it is it in your family, in, in, in the female? Well, I know that men can get lichen sclerosis as well. Is, is it in your family? Is, is it like, a, a, a can it be hereditary? Um, they're not sure if it is or not, because I think the main problem is a lot of people don't talk about it, even amongst families. So um, one specialist that I did spoke, uh, speak to, she said that they're not going to know for a while, because especially the older generation were too embarrassed to ever talk to doctors or or even other family members that had it. So they're finding it hard to definitely say. They think it is associated um, in families. You might know another family member with it, but they're still not sure whether it's going to be hereditary or not. Um, myself, my mum, um, she passed away before I was diagnosed because although I've had it since I was five, I didn't know until I was 43 and that was when I was diagnosed and she wasn't around then. But um, I do remember her having steroid cream and I remember her seeing a gynaecologist. So I do think there's a good chance that she did have it. Well, I was speaking online to a lady recently. She's just been diagnosed with it. Her daughter has it and uh, her mother has it. So that's three female generations in a family. Yeah. So with, with lichen sclerosis then, is it, um, is it curable or is it just about managing the, the, the symptoms? You're obviously getting the proper diagnosis, but managing the symptoms. Yeah. It's not curable, it is manageable and treatable. And you know, if as long as you're seeing the right specialist and using the right treatments for you, then there is a good chance that you could go into remission, long-term remission. Um, even myself, even before I was diagnosed, there was times throughout 
throughout those years that it went into remission by itself almost because I weren't obviously using anything for it. Um, mm. A lot of people have noticed that stress causes flares and that definitely was for me because one of my worst episodes was when my mum had died and obviously a funeral. <laughs> The funeral, I remember how bad I was that day. Not because yes. I actually died, it was more, it brings back as to my worst life of process. Uh, you know. Okay, okay. So tell us then, Claire, what is a lichen sclerosis? Well, it's a chronic inflammatory skin condition. Um, it is prominently on the genitals, whether it's male or female. It can be other areas of the body. Um, but normally that's not that's not as common. It is more common to be in the in the genitals area. Mm -hmm. um, the other areas it can be is wrists, um, under the breast, um, the anal area, the bottom of the back. You know, there are other areas it can be in, but the vulva one is normally where it's in the most. Okay, and what what does it look like? What do what do women need to be looking out for? Well, it's look different on everybody that's what's so hard and that is why I think it is misdiagnosed so much because there's a lot there's about 15 symptoms you could have but you're not necessarily going to have them all and um, the most common one is itchy skin itchy vulva area anal area as well because it can be in the anal area as well um, that is something that's the most common but not everyone so quite often you're misdiagnosed if you haven't got the itchy symptom because doctors seem to think that's the symptom you're going to have but it's not you could have a uh, white sort of crinkly looks like um, cigarette paper uh, mm -hmm. thin. Um, it could be thickened white patches as well mine was more silvery white um, and because I didn't know I had it, it was all over. I didn't notice. I didn't think that was any different. I thought that was normal for me. So I didn't realise. Um, so you, you had it on other parts of your body then? No, I've only ever had it on the vulva area. Oh, I see. I no see. Area. But, yeah, so it can be white, silvery. Again, you don't have to have that, the white areas either. But there's burning. Um, you can have tears, small cuts, especially in the perineum area. Um, you know, you can have, uh, when you go to the toilet, it can burn and sting. Mm. Uh, just have the pain um also the groin area as well can be red and sore and itchy um it's just there is quite a lot of symptoms but i think that doctors mainly think that if you haven't got white skin or itchy skin then you haven't got it but you don't have to have both of those okay uh, and, and can you get it internally in in the vagina and in the no. rectum as well no, no, only no. on the outside. If it's oh, inside, you can have it just inside the opening of the vagina, but not inside. If it's inside uh, symptoms similar, then that's normally like plainness because that is inside. The same as that's in your mouth. You can have oh. oil, um, whereas um, lichen sclerosis isn't inside. So I say that inside is and outside is. But you know, the other symptoms as well is the clitoris can be buried. Um, your labia can also reabsorb and shrink. Um, that, these are the architecture changes that you can have. Normally that takes many years um, and that's normally why I think more people are diagnosed later in life because it takes that long sometimes for, for um, the skin to change and it to look different to what it did when you were younger. So lichen sclerosis and lichen plainness, plainness obviously um, are of the same family, of the, 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 the skin disorder there, but is it just lichen sclerosis that can manifest into vulval cancer no they both can they both uh, can yeah but um lichen planus is more rarer to turn into cancer than lichen sclerosis is so <laughs> if, if someone's got lichen planus and they've got it in their mouth clear could that potentially turn into oral cancer yeah, yeah. yes okay yeah. right that's interesting thank you so yeah right so next question then who gets lichen sclerosis well, anybody can, uh, male, female, young, old. It is more common in those over 50. Again, that's why I think a lot of GPs um, ruled it out, anyone younger, because they seem to have tunnel vision on the age thing. Um, mm. my, my personal opinion is it probably takes that long to get diagnosed or to even notice that you've got the symptoms, that you are nearly that age, maybe, before you're diagnosed or before you notice symptoms are getting worse. But there are yeah. a lot of people getting diagnosed younger now, in their 20s and 30s. Um, again, children, they used to say that children grow out of it and that you're cured, but, you know, that's not true because a lot of people a lot of, will go into remission for many years mm. um, back in their late 30s or 40s, but did have it as a child. and don't even know they had it until they look at the doctor look at their notes and realise they were diagnosed mm. with it, but assume it's something that you grow out of. But that's not always the case. It can happen, but it's not always the case. So any age, and male and female. 
So, so these people that are diagnosed when they're in the 50s or the 60s then, do they tell you that they've had the symptoms for a long, long time and they've only just received a, a proper diagnosis? Um, some do, yes. Some, like myself, because obviously I was 43 when I was diagnosed, and that made me, that made me look back and then think about all the symptoms I had, uh, what it looked like. Um, so that's when a lot of other people do the same. It's not until they're diagnosed. Or mm. Swipe and swipe. So it makes them think and look back about you know what symptoms they had before, and a lot of yeah. those believe as well, like me, that they never had thrush, or maybe did have thrush as well as, but um, it was probably lichen sclerosis. Mm. Now I know your your lichen sclerosis um, did unfortunately manifest into vulval cancer, but you, you are in remission now, aren't you? Yes, I was told when I was forty three that I had lichen sclerosis and stage three cancer. Um, because the lichen sclerosis was untreated, you know, I didn't know I had it, and over a long period of time, because that's most people that are diagnosed with vulvar cancer that was caused by ALS is because they had it undiagnosed and untreated for many years before. But yes, yeah, so I'm now currently four years in remission. So, what was the treatment then for the for the vulval cancer, Clay? Well, for the cancer, it was um, surgery. I had the tumor was actually um, it started off as a small tear in the perineum area. And then as about a year went on, it didn't heal. Obviously, I didn't know I had lichen sclerosis. I ignored it, really. Mm. But um, I did go back and was told it was just um, thrush. Um, and then that tear turned into like an ulcer, open ulcer. And it started to get mm. bigger and bigger quite quickly. Mm. Um, that was removed. Obviously, that was a tumour itself. So that was removed. Um, they also removed um, some central nodes in my lymph nodes on my right side. Mm -hmm. so, that the cancer would spread if it did spread so that came back clear mm -hmm. I had surgery and that and then I had um, some scans after and I noticed that my left side the lymph nodes were swollen um, my oncologist decided that he didn't like leaving them so he wanted to go in and remove some and, and check so six months later I had more surgery they looked uh, took six lymph nodes out and three came back as cancerous so it uh, to my lymph nodes so it was stage three so, okay then that to have um I already had radiotherapy first time after the surgery. So they decided to give me more radiotherapy um on my lymph nodes and my abdomen nodes. So in total I had 25 sessions of radiotherapy the first time and then 33 sessions, um which is 33 days really. Um that takes over between five and eight weeks of uh, radiotherapy. So I should imagine now then, Claire, that you are very meticulous in examining your vulva and your perineum, perineum both manually and yeah. visually. Do you use a mirror? <laughs> what do you do? You think so, but a lot of the time, even those that have got, you know, had cancer, we're still a bit scared to look because we think it's going to come back. Yes. Um, obviously, yes. I still use steroid cream because I still got lichen sclerosis. So I continue to use my steroid cream every um, week, a couple of times a week. Um, and obviously I use a mirror so that I can check where I'm putting the cream because it helps oh. to put in it. So, yes, use a mirror to check. It helps if you, you know, if you know what it looks like to start with, because obviously I never really looked. Um, oh. like you, you, most people don't. We're told to check our breasts, but we're never told to check our vulva. So I had no idea really how, it, how bad it had changed until it had because I hadn't looked. Um, and because I'd always, always been white, whiter skin, mm. I just normal for vulva. So again, yes. I didn't notice. Um, so yes, yeah, so it helps to look before you're diagnosed with anything, so you know what's wrong. Mm. Um, so then you'll know that lump wasn't there or that wasn't that colour. And then you can, you know, go to the doctor then and say this wasn't like this a couple of months ago, or whatever. You know, it's not normal for me. And then hopefully then I get checked out. The thing is, you know, when we're in the bath or the shower and we're washing down there, you know, we. we we should be, we should, I mean, I'm aware, um, you know, I, I was saying to someone the other day that when I first went, the, went on the contraceptive pill back in the, nine, the late 1970s, I used to go to an excellent family planning clinic and it was, uh, I don't think they exist anymore actually, but, you know, all the, all the staff, the receptionists, the nurses, the doctors, they were all female and I was, uh, I was taught how to properly examine my breasts there. So I've always done that, but they never touched on how to examine the, uh, the vulva. And, and I suppose maybe it's because breast cancer, it's the second biggest um, killer of, of women, whereas vulval cancer is more rare. Yeah, it only affects about 1,300 a year. 
yeah. um, which, which compare to obviously breast cancer and bowel cancer is low. Um, yeah. And that's how they see it. They see it as rare. So it's almost like I don't care. You know, it's yeah. rare. No, we don't care about that. Let's just concentrate on the more common cancers and conditions. Um, and that's why I suppose, we, you know, a lot of us don't don't know about it. But it's, it's not really you're the person that's got it, is it? No, so, so, um, no. so what I'm going to, I'm just going to check to see if anyone's asked any questions, Claire. So if while I'm doing that, you can just um, yeah touch on what, what causes it, some of the causes of uh, lichen sclerosis. But they don't really know what causes it. Um, they think that it's autoimmune because obviously it attacks the body. Um, and also they think it could be hormonal. They think it could be due to, to um, trauma. Um, you know, they're still not sure. Um, there is a research going on all over the world for different um, ways of treating it and what causes it. But they seem to all come back with, with the same sort of things all the time. Um, so they're not really sure. They know that um, stress can cause flares. Um, food, they're not sure about diet. They've looked into it and they're not sure. Um, some people have changed their diet and they've not noticed a difference. Others haven't noticed a difference when they changed it. Um, some people notice they have a flare. That's why it's quite important, really, to have a diary of what you eat, what you use, what you're wearing, wow. Wow. Um, you, know, you know, what you put on your skin. So you can see then why you're flaring, what you've done. Did you eat something or did you wear something? And it rules things out. But for me, food didn't play a part in it. Yeah, I, I suppose me looking at it from a naturopathic viewpoint, um, anything that affects the um, that has a detrimental impact on the gut, because around eighty percent of the immune system is located in the gut. So anything that impacts the gut can increase the risk of all autoimmune diseases, and that and that includes diet. It, it includes stress as well, because stress impacts the bacteria in the gut, and that that then impacts the immune system generally so i would all, always be looking at supporting the immune system with any potential autoimmune disease there's, there's a few ladies claire there's um <laughs> there's a miriam craner do you know miriam yes, miriam no. you are wonderful as always claire <laughs> and uh, there's a few ladies here who yes one lady uh she is 39 and was diagnosed last june Another lady has uh, plainness in her mouth, plus a crossover of sclerosis and plainness. Uh, another one treated for thrush for six years plus before being diagnosed with lichen sclerosis. Oh, yeah, Sheila. Uh, this is Sheila Barnard. Um, and this is one of my questions that I had written down, actually, Sheila. Can hormone imbalances cause or increase the risk of getting lichen sclerosis? Yeah, that's, that's another uh, reason they put that could be the cause, but again, they don't know because don't I think know. because most are diagnosed over fifty. I think that's why they think it could be something to do with hormones. Um, yes. And quite a few dermatologists will give estrogen cream anyway because it does help in that in the vulva area anyway using that cream. But it's, you know they don't really know. They just I think ninety percent will say that it's autoimmune because it can coexist with other autoimmune diseases. Um, yes. But, people have more than one i don't have any others and there are quite a few others don't there's also could be a family history of autoimmune immune diseases for example thyroid disease um my mum had thyroid disease it could be the link why you know i've got it um but i've got no other autoimmune diseases um but yeah you now the jury's out they're not really sure you know we just need more money plowed into life and sclerosis really so they can find out what mm. causes you know, so we can start getting on proper, proper you know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, Claire, but I'm not very hopeful of more money being ploughed into it, into research, because it's not at the top of the agenda, is it? No. Well, well, that as well. And plus, you know, it depends on who you talk to. Some will say it's rare. Some will say that it's common. And um, the problem is that, you know, a lot of us believe that it's, it's common, but it's just rarely diagnosed. Yeah. You know, it is misdiagnosed as thrush and other conditions. Um, also, a lot of women will be too embarrassed to go to their GP. So how many millions will be out there with lichen sclerosis without even knowing? Um, yes. you know, it's hard to know how many. You know, some doctors say it's one in a hundred. You know, we don't really know the numbers, but I definitely believe it's a lot more. I'm sure it is. And, and I wonder if these women who are too frightened or embarrassed to go and uh, see their GP, I wonder if they're also getting their smears because of the same, you know, the same reasons they're frightened or embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also pain as well. If you've already got, 
you know, got problems in the vulva area that you don't want to go for your smear test because you don't know why you've got, you know, a problem, whether it's vaginal atrophy or liposclerosis. You know, there are ways to help. You know, if you get estrogen cream, for example, a couple of weeks before you go for your cervical screening test, that helps. Um, mm. you know, explain to the nurse, you know, what your symptoms are, how it feels. Ask mm. for, you know, the smaller speculums, that doesn't hurt as much. There's ways around it, but, you know, unfortunately, nurses aren't trained in vulva diseases which is one of the reasons why I started campaigning myself because, you know, I was quite angry getting diagnosed with a cancer I'd never heard oh. of. It was called oh. a condition that could have been caught about 35 times beforehand. I'd seen loads of GPs. I've had two children, so I've seen midwives and doctors for that. Um, I've had um, eight smear tests in my lifetime. Not one nurse or GP has ever said, oh, that doesn't look right. It's white. Yeah, oh, that looks right. Yes, yeah, that looks a bit odd. All the boxes for lichen sclerosis, but they wasn't aware of it. So that I think I was quite angry with. And because I was diagnosed so late, I'm now left with quite a lot of side effects from the cancer. You know, my life will never be the same again. So, Is that because of the radiotherapy? Yes, because it was caught so late. I had, I've had four surgeries on my groin and vulva. So I've now got nerve damage. The radiotherapy at 43 put me straight into full-on menopause. So I went straight into, couldn't sleep, hot sweats, all the symptoms straight away. Oh, I've also got lymphedema in my abdomen, vulva, pelvis, left leg. Um, you know, that's without the fatigue, you know, the mental health side of it. Just, you know, there's just, my life's different. My family's life is different. So I was really angry, really, that yeah. you, know, you know about it. And, you know, even now, this month is, is um, vulva cancer um, the only chance I get for awareness because it's gone to a cancer awareness month and hardly any media for it. You know, you've got the charities that do the gynecological cancers, you know, but they've been sharing bits for it, some better than others. Um, but, you know, the NHS have only posted one thing and that was today, the end of the month. Cancer Research only posted one thing on Twitter. You know, it's not in the media, vulva mm -hmm. cancer. You know, mm -hmm. and to get vulva cancer in the media, you know, it's going to get lichen sclerosis in the media as well. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Well, yeah. look, um, let's, um, yeah, so the, I mean, you, the, the complications of lichen sclerosis, then, well, I think you've, you've pretty much covered those, Claire, um, certainly in terms of the, the risk of it developing into, into vulval cancer. But how, how, does, how does lichen sclerosis affect women in particular on, on a daily basis? What, um, how does it affect their quality of life? Well, that obviously depends on like most conditions on, on how bad you've got that condition. Um, from, you know, only if you've got it mild, it could be a slight irritation. Um, might only notice when you go to the toilet and, you know, you're okay. You, you can virtually live a normal life. Then you've got the top of the spectrum where you've got women, obviously, that are in so much pain. They can't work, can't sit. Um, they're foul relationships because of it. You know, even suicidal. Um, you know, it's, it's, it impacts your everyday life. Same as vulva cancer does, because it affects an area where you have to go to the toilet multiple times a day. So you can never forget about it, even if yeah. you're bad symptoms, because you've got to change the way sort of you live as well. You've got to change your soap powder, you've got to change how you wash, you've got to check, you've got to put creams on, you know, you've got a routine. Mm. So big impact for many people and it's you know, it's, it's devastating. Like a lot mm. of people, especially mm. what I want to talk about. Yeah, can, can, can I just say to everyone, uh, welcome to tonight's live. Uh, I'm speaking to Claire Baumhauer. Is that correct, Claire? Claire Baumhauer uh, from the Lichen Sclerosis and Vulval Cancer UK Awareness Groups. And Claire is all over social media if you want to connect with her. Uh, and we're talking about lichen sclerosis and how it's often misdiagnosed um, for many, many years as, as thrush. Uh, Claire, can it get misdiagnosed as, as anything else, or is it just thrush? Oh, sister, you said cystitis when, when you yeah, were first diagnosed as a four-year-old. Yes, well, that, that was when I was younger because, obviously, I couldn't really describe the symptoms as much. Um, my mum would hear me screaming in the toilet because going to the toilet, obviously, it's just but the urine would just burn because I would have cuts or sores from scratching. So, you know, the stinging is just unbearable. It's like having knives start stabbed in you. So she'd hear me scream and uh, she said, right, well, I'll take to the doctors. So the symptoms were, um, obviously, when I went to the toilet, it burned. So they said cystitis. Um, so yes, it can be misdiagnosed uh, by even even by yourself. You can mistreat it, uh, mm. self or yourself as thrush. It's similar to so many. Um, you've got um, vulva psoriasis. You've got eczema. You've obviously got like lichen planus. Mm. You've got 
abdominal atrophy. Um, the list is, well, there's probably about 10 different vulvar conditions and they've all got similar symptoms. So they are hard, hard to get diagnosed. That is why we need more specialists in this country because there isn't, a, um, you know, it doesn't matter whether you see a dermatologist or a gynecologist, it's as long as they have specialist training in LS. Um, mm. There's not enough of them, so the waiting list to see one is quite a long time. You're lucky. So how, how did you get, what happened then? How did you get referred and then get correctly diagnosed? Did you go and see a GP? Yes, yeah, so I've gone, like I said, multiple times over the years. Yes. And when I had the open sore, I went to the GP again, and I, uh, I saw um, uh, another, out of all the times I've seen GPs, they're nearly all male. But this was the second female GP I saw, and she was the one that said to start with is herpes. And she saw the shock in my face because obviously I've been happily married at that time for 25 years. Or so yes. I thought I was married. I'm now thinking, you know, it's playing a wave. What's going thing. on? Yes, yes. Shocked by my shocked face. So she does actually, because um, originally she told me to go to a gum clinic to get diagnosed with herpes, mm. which I wouldn't mm. have, I would never have gone to one. So mm. I'll be dead now because I wouldn't have gone to one and that would have been it. But um, she looked again and said, actually, it could be vulva cancer. So she straight away put me on the two-week urgent referral, which you have in the UK we have um, if they think it's cancer. So within two weeks, so I'd been uh, referred to my local hospital gynaecologist, who um, they actually mentioned lichen sclerosis then. Um, but I said, is it vulva cancer? But they wouldn't say, obviously. I was no. Like, no. Like, when was that, Claire? This was um, in May 2016. Mm. And, uh, and that was when they took a biopsy of the church took, took three different biopsies around one on the actual tumor um, and two in two other areas and then within 10 days I was called back in with my husband and I was told then that I had cancer as well as lichen sclerosis oh what a sick. terrible shock oh you were like you you must have been so angry well well shock yes because you're shocked first of all that you've got a cancer yes you're you've got a cancer in an area you didn't even think existed and mm. you're shocked if you've never heard of, of so, so yes, uh, it's, like, it's a big one really, really because you, you know, and you know you're going to be alone because you've never heard anyone with that cancer. Oh, so, well, we're losing you, Claire. Oh, you, you just you disappeared then <laughs> for a few seconds. You've now have you frozen? Oh, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. uh, Can you hear me? oh. <laughs> we keep losing you, Claire. Sorry, um, you're frozen. Can you hear me now? Um. um Keep talking. Um, yeah, so that's when I was, to I was told in May 2016 yes. um, that I had cancer. And um, like I said about how angry I was, was when I started looking on social media, really, to find more about it, find groups. I found a couple of um, vulva cancer groups, but they were mostly Americans. So that's why I started my own support group for vulva cancer. I met when, when did you start that? When did you start your support group? <laughs> Four years ago, I started that. Four years ago, yeah. And, um, I, that's when I met Emma Norman, who I do all this with. You know, I'm not on my own. I'm not just the only one. There's two of us. Um, has has Emma got lichen sclerosis as well, yes. then? Emma's got lichen sclerosis. So together, we um, decided to start the awareness campaigns, really. So we started the website together and the Facebook page, Lichen Sclerosis Vulva Cancer, together. We have our separate accounts on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Vulva Cancer UK Awareness. And yes. Emma is having sclerosis, UK awareness. But we do everything together. We run the support groups together. We've got over five and a half thousand in our LS support groups. Um, mm. you know, we've, we've got uh, a children's support group as well, men's support groups. I've mm. got uh, I've got the vulva cancer support group. Emma also does the like complainers support group. So I can really see that you're very you're very passionate about it, Claire. Can I just oh. read this question out from um, from a later lady here? Uh, how do you ensure a correct diagnosis of lichen sclerosis? I was told many years ago that's what I had after thinking it was thrush for years, but I don't recall any investigative tests or swabs. So how can I be sure? I had lots of cracks like athlete's foot that, was some, that would sometimes bleed and was given a steroid cream, which I used occasionally when it flares up. So what does Tracy need to do, Claire? Well, she needs to go back to her GP, really, and ask to be referred to a specialist because, you know, lichen sclerosis is a lifelong condition and it's also got a very small cancer risk. It is only 5%, but it's still a risk. So you need to be seen regularly. Wow. Um, you know, if you're diagnosed or told you have thrush, um, then you need to have a swab to make sure wow. that it is 
it's, it is for us to start with. And if treatment's not helping or only helps a little bit, then go back. Just keep pestering your doctor and say, look, it's not working. It must be something else. Could it be life and sclerosis? Ask to be referred to a specialist. Make sure, you know, look yourself in, into the area where you live and find one. Ask if you can be referred to them. I know some people do go private so they can get seen quicker. Um, you know, just make sure that you are seeing, seeing somebody that sees LF patients regularly. Because they so when, when you say a specialist, Claire, sorry, you, you mean either a, a dermatologist or a... Um, a gynecologist, yeah, it can be... A, a gynecologist. Yeah. But but you need to know, you, well, I, I, I would ask, I'd say, you know, does this gynecologist, does this dermatologist specialise in lichen sclerosis? I, you know, I would be asking those those questions. Yeah, you need to definitely ask because sometimes you go to one that's not because it is hard, isn't it? Although it's a skin condition, sometimes dermatologists don't look at the vulva, and then obviously gynecologists they they say it's it's a skin condition, it's not my build. So you've got to make sure you get the right one, and you've got to see one regularly. Ideally, in life, but there's not enough obviously money in NHS to see one regularly. Some do, some don't but you need to see one regularly at least until you're in remission and getting proper help and then maybe get referred back to you so 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 there are no um lichen sclerosis clinics then where women can go and get checked out periodically um there are something that there are some clinics are for example my dermatologist i see regularly um in london um uh, she has got a obviously a clinic and most of her patients are lichen sclerosis um, and, and do you go do you go privately then clear no, no, no. Once I was obviously I was diagnosed with, with with cancer, I still see my oncologist every six months, but I see my dermatologist every three months. Um, and you are supposed to see one at least for the first three months because you know you're given a steroid cream, um, a highly potent steroid cream, and they've got to make sure that you're putting it in the right place, the right amount. Um, that it's working for you so you've got to come back after a few weeks so they can check that you're on the right one well you yes so many you know steroid creams not everyone suits the high potency one well well different. tracy she was misdiagnosed with eczema then thrush and finally ls so tracy i just hope that you're um you're getting the correct treatment now and you're getting um periodic um, checkups as well right so Treatment then, treatment of lichen sclerosis, Claire. So you, you keep mentioning steroid cream. And when I think of steroid cream, I think, oh, don't use steroid cream too frequently because there's the risk that it that it may thin the skin. But I know when I was speaking to you um, a week or so ago, you said it's important to correctly apply the steroid cream. So can you just tell us what you mean by that? Well, yes, the, that's the main problem, I think, with lichen sclerosis is it's not eczema. It's not the same as psoriasis. So, you know, steroid cream is different for, for us that we, we use it. It will not thin the vulva skin if you're using it correctly, the right amount in the right areas. Um, and it's not going to cause the side effects that, say, eczema does, for example. So, you know, rules, forget about that straight away. A lot of dermatologists will tell you just to throw the leaflet that comes with the steroids in the bin because it's not for us, because it says on there not to use on genitals, for example. Mm -hmm. Not to use is there. So ignore the leaflet and just go by what the dermatologist tells you to do, which is normally the guidelines are to use a high-potent steroid. In, a, in the UK, it's normally Dermavate which you're supposed to use, most will say once a day, some do say twice, but say once a day, every day for at least a month. And then if you're doing okay on that, then you can then drop back to twice a day for a month. And if you're doing okay on that, then drop back to twice a week. But if you're not doing okay, then continue, because many are on for at least the whole three months daily. Again, that's why you need to see a specialist, so that you're seeing somebody, so they can see that it's working. Because not the same steroid will work for everyone. Some can't tolerate a high potent steroid. They might need a lower, just a strong steroid, um, or even moderate steroid. But they've got to find out which one works for you. And also, you know, ointment works better than cream because the ointment then isn't doesn't always burn so much and won't cause um, contact dermatitis. So most people will we put on on the cream first by GPs, for example. It should really be the ointment. So just make sure that you're using it the right way, the right amount. Most are told um, half a fin fingertip amount. But again, that depends on how much of the area you need to apply it. If it's the whole mm -hmm. of the area and the perineum and anal area, then you might need a bit more. Um, it, it must be really tricky, though, Claire, you know, getting a cream or an ointment uh, down there. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just sort of picturing it, um, you know, in, in my mind, how, how I do it. I mean... 
What do you do? Do you just sit on the loo and, and do yeah, it there? You've you got to find what works for you. Some people, yeah. think, they don't want to be too scared to look, so they don't look, they just apply it all over, which means you could be putting it in the wrong area. Um, but yeah, for me, I normally put one leg up on the bath and then use a mirror, hold a mirror with, with, with my other hand. Um, some people sit on their bed with their legs open like you would do, having a smear test, for example, popped yeah. up with nose, um, some squat over over a mirror. you just got to find the way that works for you. And or you can get your partner to do it for you. Yes, you can, yes. The reason why you need to see a specialist is that so they can, some specialists, they have a mirror with them and they will show you um, whereabouts your active LS is, whereabouts to apply it, how much to use, um, you know, because uh, that's why you need to see. I'm so adamant about seeing specialists because that's why I think so many um, give up on a steroid too early or blame the steroid for symptoms or burning because they're not using the steroid correctly mm. or even, they don't even have lichen sclerosis because mm. it works the other way around. Some people are told they've got lichen sclerosis and they haven't. They've got mm. a or another condition. So they're yes. blaming the steroids for, for making it worse because they probably didn't have lichen sclerosis. So you need to see a specialist. So they can show you where to put it, how much to put it, get seen regularly. Um, so they make sure that you're on the on the correct dose, the correct one for you. Um, and then once hopefully you're in remission, whether that takes three months or a year, um, then you can start to cut back to maintenance dose. That mm -hmm. now has been proven by studies in uh, in Australia. Also, there's other research going on at the moment to do with um, how often to use the steroids. But at the moment, the guidelines are to use it regularly. Um, mm. I, I know some women use a combination of steroid cream and estrogen cream, don't we? And they find that 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 works quite well. I've had women contact me since I kind of um, advertised this live that you know we're going to be talking about lichen sclerosis, that uh, coconut oils help them, putting coconut oil in the bath, uh, or, or at least it helps relieve the, the, the soreness, the, the, the pain. And then I've also had a lady contact me from America who uses a cream by a company called Perrins. Have you come across that? Mm -hmm. Perrins Cream, P-E-R-R-I-N-S. Um, I'm not quite, quite sure what's in it. Um, so, but I, I just want to, Michelle, so, yeah, that's all quite worrying. Over the years, I've had many bouts of thrush cystitis and my dentist tells me I have plainness. Recently, the vulva has been extremely itchy, so I'm 67. So, Michelle, you need to go back to your GP and you need to get a referral to a specialist, either a dermatologist. Yeah, at that age, it might just be, you know, it could just be contact dermatitis if you change your soap powder. It's, it yes. be, you know, it's just itching is quite common um, in the role wear anyway, and it could be multiple things. Always see a doctor anyway. And make but, sure but, e but even if even if Michelle goes to see her GP, Claire, um, shouldn't she be referred to a specialist? Well, not necessarily at that stage. I need to, you know, try and rule out some things first, whether it is thrush, whether it is something else. You know, you, you've got to try different things first, and if it don't help or make it worse and just go back you know it's your body you know what's right and what's wrong you've got to stand mm. up for yourself. you know i've learned that the hard way but yes you know, you know it's your body you're not happy that the treatment's not working just keep going back uh, even harder now obviously because it's hard to get a face to face but you can't look at the vulva on the phone so you need to set them up tell them you know you've got a condition that affects the of course yes yes look you know, mention that there's a cancer risk, because then that might make them think, oh, maybe I should... Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so, yeah. Have, you, have you heard of this product then, Claire? Hydromel. Hydromel oh, is a good product. Yes, Hydromel, that's... Um, I'm talking about the steroids, they're obviously the one thing that's the most important for lichen sclerosis, but also um, emollients, things that you use alongside your steroids. Is which, this a steroid uh, or an emollient? No, it's an emollient. I use, um, I use this one, which is... Uh, you see it? Oh, I'm the wrong one. Oh, yes, very similar to hydromol. Um, they're just um, ointment forms which you so soap substitute, use them in the in the bath, the shower to use. Um, you can use them, you just add water to them to make them um, into a moisturizer or a barrier. It's, it's helpful to have some sort of barrier around your vulva when you go to the toilet because. They're starting to do research now into urine, how urine affects. Mm. I'm not sure whether it's a cause or whether it's um, an irritation. Because really? It's That's interesting. Um, Sheila's just asking, Claire, uh, do you put it in on the inside and outside? She uses a cotton bud. 
is that for steroid or for a marion? If it's steroid, not um, some, people, some people use their finger. You can get um, little cloths that go on the end of the finger. Some people don't like getting steroid on there. Um, yeah, I suppose you could use a cotton bud, but then most of it would stick to the cotton bud. But just make sure you put the uh, steroid on, rub it in gently for sort of 90 seconds, as specialists say. And also some say to have a bath first so that it's, it um, softens the skin and can help. Um, but emollients then just, yeah, emollients just use, you know, your hand. Um, some say to use a spoon or a spatula to get the emollients out of the tub so you're not going to cause bacteria or, or risk of infection. Um, but again, you can use that, like you say, as a barrier, as a wash, as a moisturiser. There's loads of emollients. It's okay. not one. Okay. And, and Tra Tracy, she's currently symptom free and into her second month of treatment. She had a checkup the other day and a GP said, couldn't see anything. Should she still continue with her three monthly treatment and keep it under control twice a week? She's got a gyne appointment in December. Well, the problem is, as soon as you stop the steroid, the symptoms will come back. The flare will happen again. So that's you know the main reason why they ask you to carry on with the steroids. If you've got a really mild case of lichen sclerosis, and some doctors will say that you don't really necessarily need to continue with steroids but most of the time the symptoms are going to come back whether it's straight away or weeks or months later or even years later so, so it, is a, it is a lifelong condition it's a lifelong condition isn't it yeah so you need yes. lifelong treatment and that is at the moment it's steroids so yes a lot of people will drop down to a lower a strength steroid for maintenance if the symptoms are fine then try a lower strength one either ask your gp for one or you can buy hydrocortisone yourself over the counter use that regularly um it's you know we're not all the same so the amount of steroid what steroids you use um is all different for everybody i think that's the main problem that we have everyone's chasing a remission or a cure when they see somebody uses this type of cream this type of um salt you know, this type they all massively jump on it and try and do it, and they're causing yes. their problems, changing their emollients, changing their creams. So, so okay, we've only got about five minutes left. So, I, I wonder if you could give uh, people some um, some quick tips. I mean, a lady contacted me the other day. She has lichen sclerosis, and she said, you know, she, when she's had a bath or a shower, she doesn't use a towel because rubbing can irritate it. She uses a hair dryer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully, not on the hot setting. Now, that's one of the things that um, my specialist nurse told me to do after my vulva surgery, not to rub, pat dry even, just use a hairdryer on cool setting. Some still use it. I use what's called a peri bottle, which I know that a lot of people use as well in our group. You fill it up with water and then once you go to the toilet, you can squirt that either while you're going to the toilet to help it from burning. Um, oh, also, yeah. also, I do it every time because of this link between urine. Um, I think it helps to wash it off. We've also noticed that a lot, lot of us, we don't we straight. We we on our leg um, all over the place, which we think as well could be to do with the architecture changes that we have. So it helps to do that. Again, pat dry. I quite often use um, cotton cloths to dry. I've got these, which I, we can buy online. They're just like little cotton cloths. And I just keep them in a little bag, hanging off my toilet roll holder. And then I use that to pat dry and then put them in a little bin with a lid on to wash. Um, the same as underwear, um, you know. Yes, cotton underwear. When you have a period, obviously you having to use tan packs are impossible for a lot of people. I've never been able to use tan packs, and I think having lichen sclerosis was one of the reasons why. I've never um, been able to use them either. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm well past that now, I'm well over the menopause. And I would say <laughs> women as well who uh, who use uh, panty liners to make sure that they're non-bleached, that they're cotton, and they, they're non-bleached ones because you know yeah, potentially yeah. the bleach the bleach could irritate as well couldn't it in uh, in panty yeah. liners yeah. same with toilet roll um some people can't use certain toilet rolls Cheap yes. for example yeah. some people use that um yeah so you've got to find what works for you six bath some people use six bath put them on their toilet yes. mm -hmm. put water in. some use epsom salt salt um, mm -hmm. can help mm -hmm. Um, like you say, some people use coconut oil, and that can cause irritation for people. That can cause problems if you use it on dilators, for example. So that can cause problems. So again, be careful. Yeah, I so use that on my yeah she, she, she used Bert, Bert's Bees diaper cream or aloe vera gel, and lots of people, like you yeah. say, use sits baths every time they go to the toilet. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah it's interesting about the urine, though. You know, could could the urine be uh, be a connection because the urine is too acidic, or there's something in the urine that's that's changing yeah, the structure of, of yeah. you know of the vulva. People use Vaseline as well as a barrier to help with for urine. Um, I, I don't use that. I use um, my ammonium for that mainly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's mainly just finding out what works for you and what helps. So, can just before we wind up, Claire, can you uh, just let people know where they can find you and your, uh, you know, your awareness, your support groups? Yeah. Well. Oh, you're frozen. LSBC UK Awareness. LSBC UK Awareness. Weebly.com because we're not a charity, Emma. We're just two people that use our own money, our own time. Um, so we do sell badges which help um, produce leaflets and information cards that we send out to businesses. Um, some chemists have them. Um, so we have all that. All that information is on our website. We have obviously support groups. Lark and sclerosis group is for anyone, doesn't matter what country you live in, although it says UK. Um, again, you've got to be diagnosed with LS or think you've got it, because obviously it's hard to get diagnosed to join. Make sure you answer all the questions. We also have uh, an international support group we work alongside, which is where Miriam comes from. She's the uh, admin on that group um, with them. We've got that on the uh, website. We've also got, if you're diagnosed with vulva cancer um, in the UK, there's that one. That's all on the website. It sounds like a full-time job, Claire. Do you work? Um, I work part-time, but yes, it has, it has, it has, it has become a, like a part-time yes. job in a way. But I, I, can see, I can see that it's your passion. You know, you care deeply mm -hmm. about it and, you know, creating more awareness and education about this condition. So I just want to thank you so much. I've learned so much more about lichen sclerosis and I'm going to be much more aware of my vulva and vagina when I'm I, I always have been though like I say you know I've always been very very body aware and looking for any, any changes kind of on the outside of my body and how I feel on the inside as well I, I just, you know that's just something I've always done so I'd like to thank you so much for that and uh I will, like I say, I'll be sending this. This video is streaming in the group to me talking on YouTube, and I'm going to be sending it out in a newsletter as well. So if anyone wants to receive my newsletters, um, they can sign up on the Just for Tummies website. And I just want to say that uh, for women, probiotic capsules, that's the last day today, finishes at midnight tonight, and they're 10% off. So go and check those out on the Just for Tummies website too. So Claire, um, can't thank you enough for giving up your time uh, to speak to thank us. You. It's been uh, it's been absolutely fantastic. So educational. I've, I've loved it. Thank you. And ladies, thank you for watching. And I hope you found that uh, I hope you found this useful too. So uh, good night, everyone. Good night, Claire. Thank you. Good night. Take care. Thank you.